The times of the day are not all equal. There is a specific time that is more blessed than the other times of the day. Who can tell me that time? Yes, what time of the day? Not a Friday, any day. What time of the day? Or let me word it differently. What time of the day or night is the most blessed? Someone says Fajr. Can someone else try? Yes? Someone says between Asr and Maghrib. Can someone else try? The last third of the night, subhanallah, from a specific angle, it is the most blessed. When you want to cry out to Allah, that is the moment. Do you know why? There is a guarantee when Allah is asking you, who is there, who is seeking my help, I can help. Who is seeking forgiveness, I will forgive. Who is repenting, I will accept. Who wants anything, I will give. What are we doing? What am I doing? Sleeping. May Allah forgive me and all of us. It's not haram because it's not, meaning it's not haram to be sleeping at that time because it's not compulsory to be up and engaged in worship at that time. But when you do, and if you do, it is surely a sign of a few things. Number one is your closeness to Allah and your relationship with Him. You get to a level where you make it a habit. Maybe not every day, once a month. Is it difficult to get up for tahajjud once a month? No. When football is on, we're up. Subhanallah. Not just once a month, but the whole season. We'll spend money and, and time, effort and energy. We'll go. The funny thing is, the day of football, I know of young people who've got up for tahajjud. For what? To make dua for their team. La hawla wa la quwata illa billah. Imagine. It's happening. It's a reality. It goes to show that you actually believe in Allah. Imagine. Even if you got up for tahajjud to make dua for your team, I might tell you the dua you were making was very petty. But one thing I know for sure, you believe in Allah. Do you get the point? Because you did, you did something that might have been petty, but you called out to the right one, the deity. No wonder your team keeps winning, mashallah. But the fact of it is, my brothers and sisters, we know that there is a time of that morning, the early hours of the morning or the last hours of the night. In, in the hadith, it's called thuluthul laylil akhir, the last third of the night, right? When... Allah is calling out to you and I and many times we're sleeping. I was saying, you're either close to Allah or it shows that you believe in Allah, at least. You know, if I were to call out to Allah, the fact that I'm making dua to Him, supplicating unto Him, already proves that I believe in Him and His power and His ability. Isn't that a good thing? That's why the hadith says, Addu'a'u huwa al-ibada. Supplicating, calling out to Allah is in actual fact worship of Allah. That is worship. That's the core of worship. And another narration says, Malam yas Whoever doesn't ask Allah, Allah gets angry with that person. Angry meaning Allah is upset with that person. Subhanallah. Because you're not calling out to Allah at all. That's why every one of us has needs. Needs that we ourselves don't really trust our own ability and capacity in fulfilling. We ask Allah because Allah says, the moment we create that need in you and you've asked us, it proves that you believe in us. You believe in the superpower of Allah. When I say superpower, I'm not talking of nations. I'm talking of the supreme deity. The one like whom is none. That is Allah. I've called out to him. So Allah gave us another opportunity every single day. But when you want something, you don't have to wait for a Friday. When you want to return to Allah and turn to Him, you don't have to wait for a Friday. When you want to ask Allah, you don't have to wait for the time of tahajjud. You can start calling out now and when you get to the time of tahajjud, you can get up again and repeat the dua. Do you get my point?